On this episode of The Wild Table, we head to the beach to send out the predator Kontiki to harvest a haul of fresh fish. We also set up the pit bry and smoke some juicy peaches to pair with a number of Southeast Asian ingredients to create a mouth-watering Thai red curry. A meal not to be missed. So we're back at the Matata Straits and we've brought the Contigu with us and we brought some food to cook and we've been having a really good success fishing out here. Um, for us obviously the goal is to try and eat as much food from the wild as we can. So yeah, as I said, I've been catching some good fish out here this week, even caught a kingfish on the line actually, which is uh, freaking cool because we haven't managed to catch a kingfish all summer. And it's a little bit of work getting the um, Kontiki and all that stuff out of the truck and all set up. But once you got it there, this is just sort of one of the easiest wild food acquisition methods that we have available. Um, and I really like that, eh? It's so awesome when we just go to the beach and just set everything up. Here's the Kontiki just now. Trace boards, batteries, Kontiki winch, and a few extra bits and pieces. It's all set. And then up here, I'm gonna set up the kitchen. And I've got a beautiful um, smoked peach Thai curry today with some of the fish that we caught earlier in the week. So that's gonna be wicked. time cooking dinner on this thing this week. Basically gonna sort of half fill this thing with lump charcoal which is my second favorite medium for cooking and you light a fire from underneath and because of the updraft and the air intake it actually starts to turn the whole thing into glowing embers quite quickly. Um, so we're gonna do that get these embers nice and hot and then put them straight in the pit bar so that we have something to cook with. Fastest way to light a fire so I find I take a, a piece of an egg tray and I just fill that sort of halfway up with that blue gel and then you just stick it into whatever whatever you want to light on fire I'm just going to take some of this lump charcoal and put it in the top so that worked beautifully actually this thing just got these things piping hot like to that white hot stage which is exactly where you need the coals to be to be cooking on um, so I've just poured them into the pit bry um, also added a couple pieces of oak oak is one of my favorite woods to cook with because it just retains heat it burns very slowly retains heat and actually gives off a really beautiful wood smoky aroma at the same time what we're gonna do right now is I've got about six or seven peaches with me um, which I saw these peaches at a, at a friend's house the other day and as soon as I saw the peaches the first thing that came to my mind was smoked peach curry those things just ah oh, just a sexy combination so we're gonna take a, a bunch of peaches right now I'm gonna get the grill set onto the um, pit pry and we're just gonna sort of grill roast these peaches and we don't you want to do it like slowly so un, until the peaches sort of just start to get mushy and, and really soft but with a little bit of a blackness on the outside and um, the nice wood aroma infused into the peaches. Okay, so we've just taken the peaches and wrapped them in tin foil because uh, they already had a little bit of that nice black um, cr uh, charring on the outside which sort of gets some of the flavor in there and you could tell the sugars are starting to break down. There's a little bit of sweet sap sort of starting to trickle out of the peaches. 
So we'll wrap them in tin foil and then chuck them into the embers. And what that's going to do is it's going to really get them nice and hot and sort of make them go really soft and soggy. So then we can actually just peel them apart, get rid of the pep and use them as a base for the curry. So now while these peaches are basically just being cooked right on the embers, I'm going to start preparing some of the other ingredients. So I'm going to take my nice cast iron pot over here. I'm going to cut up some red onion. I've got some ginger, I've got some garlic, and I'm going to get a little bit of a paste going on. Okay, okay, so while those peaches are simmering away in the coals, I've just chucked some red onion, some ginger, some garlic, a little bit of coriander seed, and a lot of oil into this pot. I'm going to stick that um, on top of the grill now, so that can also start to like, slowly cook away and fragrate. In the meantime, we're going to peel those peaches out of the tin foil. Uh, hopefully they're soft and juicy enough to actually add them to the curry right now and then that whole sort of mass can start to take on some flavor so as you can see the peaches are nice and soft you can see that the, the sugars inside of them are starting to caramelize you can see it by the changing of the color and but you can also see that some of them are burned quite nicely <clears throat> and while we want that flavor of the burnt we don't really want the burnt in the curry so all i'm going to do right now is I'm going to take these peaches and I'm going to sort of scrape away a little bit of that blackened flesh um, and get the pep out of the middle um, because we don't want to eat them and then we're going to take the peaches as they are with a little bit of that charcoal is going to stay on we chuck it into the pot with the onion garlic and ginger and all the rest of that stuff and we, that will then form the base for the curry so that's going to start to slowly but surely cook down and start to really become fragrant so now I'm going to add the peaches to it and then we're going to let that simmer for a little bit and then I'm going to add a few other bits and pieces. I'm going to add some lemongrass, uh, I'm going to add some red Thai curry paste, uh, so a little bit of fish sauce and just sort of get a, bit, a few other ingredients for extra flavor in there and then I'm actually just going to let that simmer for a little bit and develop fragrance while we launch the kontiki into the ocean get some hooks out there because now is sort of the perfect time while the fish are biting. It's kind of a great dish like that because it'll cook itself and then once we've done the kontiki thing we're going to come back and we're going to add the fish to it. Okay so we've already explained how to launch the kontiki and how we do it in a previous episode so I'm not going to go through the whole rigmarole of how it works. Essentially it's an engine, it's a torpedo that takes 25 hooks out to the ocean. It's a long line, we leave it out there for about an hour and then on the winch we'll pull it back in. Straightforward stuff. It's, fu it's funny though because we get a lot of flack about using the Kontiki. Like a lot of guys who go out fishing on boats are like, ah, it's not real fishing and you're not fighting the fish on the line, etc. You know what? I don't care because ultimately I want to do as many types of hunting and fishing as I can do. And I want to do what works to get wild food in my freezer and on my table, which means this is a really handy and a really easy uh, tool for us to use to just shoot out in the afternoon, you know, be here um, sort of at three or four in the afternoon after work and just send it out to the ocean, cook a, feed, uh, cook a feed, have a drink and just chill out and pretty much know that this time of year, you're going to walk away with a nice little feed, even if it's just one nice fish. To me, that's perfect. Oh man. Oh. Oh man. That is just yum. That Thai red curry flavor with that peach as a base. And then a little bit of that smokiness. 
Oh, perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do, so I've already filleted some of the fish that we caught early in the week. It's already sitting in Tupperware in the chili bin. So we're gonna just bring that over. And then all I'm gonna do is just kind of take the little pieces of finely filleted fish. I'm just gonna carefully place them in this. And then with the embers being where they are, it's just gonna cook this through nicely. It'll take about five, six, seven minutes, something like that. Turn them over, make sure it's cooked evenly. Good to go. Yeah. I'm gonna go grab that fish. Now, um, if you are one of those people that turn their noses up at Kahawai, what you gotta know is you just have to fill it them right. If you fill it them the same way as you would a kingfish, meaning once you've got the slab in front of you, you cut away from the bloodline and then remove as much remove, sorry, as much of the red stuff that you can see, which which is this portion on the top of the fish here, which actually turns brown after a day. If you get rid of as much of that as you can, you actually get rid of that slightly fishy flavor of the fish. Um, so I've, anyway, I've filleted quite a few pieces like that. So we're going to add them straight in here. And the other thing that I've also got on there is the collars of the fish. Um, that's something I really want to encourage people to eat as much of as you can. Because if you're utilizing the fish, it just means we're not wasting stuff. Which, in my opinion, is just really respecting the environment that the fish came from and the fish itself. this meal because that fish is nearly done and it's delicious uh, is some of these which are like a packaging is horrible forgive me but these are authentic authentic Indian like roti flatbreads because uh, you obviously want to eat the curry with something so these are already pre-cooked and frozen so we just defrosted them and all you gotta do is just bang them into a sizzling hot pan and just sort of turn them a couple of times each side and they're good to go Retrieve this line now and hope that we have some nice fish on there. Yeah, I can feel something like fighting the line, which is quite rare. Like on a Kontiki, because it's such a heavy line setup, quite often you can't feel it. But I can feel something fighting. I just hope it's not a shark, which it probably wouldn't be because they just bite through the line. But <coughs> I'm just winding it in, in stages because I don't want to snap the whole thing off either. Um, but yeah, man, some tension on there. Right, here we go. There's some, some fish to show. Aisha, here we go. Beautimus. We just had a minute curry and we're gonna make some more curry. Nice fish. Probably just leave it. Oh, a couple of nice guys Hawaii. I don't know what that massive tension was. I think this clip just here was the weight that I usually clip on the front, which is like a big eight ounce sinker. Could be that they got stuck on something, but I don't know. Could have also been a shark. I also don't know. By the way, two nice guys Hawaii. Some more fish for some more curry. 
can't complain really, can you? Alright, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, we love to hear from you, so feel free to leave us a comment in the section below.